Welcome to the program. Hello, I'm your host, Ron Whitlock. On the program today, Eddie Lucio Sr., posthumously, Eddie Lucio Jr., and Eddie Lucio III. Three Eddies, all three of which have been involved with public service to the state of Texas. Over 64 years of service represented by the three Eddie Lucios. We're going to delve in that because what does it mean to that particular family? that Hispanic family, what they've done for the people of Texas and for their local community. So today we're looking also at the importance of fathers to their children because all of these dads represented at this table here today have all had and been influenced by the role model of Eddie Lucio Sr. We're going to delve into that somewhat. But before we do that, we're going to talk a little bit about the fact that a catastrophic fire devastated the Texas governor's mansion, as you know, and we were there on the front steps of the Texas governor's mansion with Anita Perry and Texas Governor Rick Perry, not far from where apparently that fire was started in the early morning hours of a Sunday morning at the state capitol. Senator Lucio, devastating, the whole world aghast. That's right. Uh, I can't tell you what that mansion meant. Uh, uh, historically speaking, it, it's, um, it's an incredible loss uh, in Texas history. Uh, Sam Houston resided there. All of the chief executive officers of the state of Texas resided there. Sam Houston, all the way to current sitting president George Bush, and of course Texas Governor Rick Perry. You've been there many times. I've been there numerous times for functions of one kind or another. Some of us uh, resided there. I resided there for one day. I was governor for a day. Yes. Um, visited the mansion uh, and uh, took a tour of, his, of it entirely. And it just it was just an incredible building. Um, I hope to, to lead uh, uh, or be one of those that maybe would lead to try to find a pu a private money to rebuild it. I know that we do have some public money budgeted, but... If you look at what we did with the state capital uh, a few years ago, we had in excess of $200 million uh, that the people of Texas donated to, for us to be able to refurbish, remodel, and expand the existing capital underground as well, four floors. I would hope we could do something similar with the mansion instead of using tax dollars um, and, and really um, bring it back and rebuild it the way in its originality. The speaker's apartment also was was refurbished by taxpayer dollars, by citizens' dollars, in contributing to that particular in enterprise. Why is that the case? Is it because we are still a volunteer state per se? We don't have full-time uh, senators, representatives. We have bureaucrats and agencies, but other than the governor who's full-time, everybody else is really on a part-time basis, such as yourself and Eddie Lucio III. You're correct. Um, I, I think that um, because we meet on odd-numbered years uh, for the legislature, 140 days to take up and consider um, the budget and, and over five, 6,000 pieces of legislation, that's the case. So we, get, we, get paid, we get paid 600 bucks a month to be legislators, my son and I, and also the lieutenant governor um, and the speaker. So, uh, yes, I would hope that we could go to annual meetings maybe and work on a budget one year and legislation the following year. The seventh biggest economy in the world. Being, yeah. 138 million billion dollar budget. Being led and directed by a part-time legislative body. That's right. Well, Eddie, Eddie uh, serves in the Appropriations Committee. I serve in the Finance Committee. So we have first-hand knowledge on where all the dollars are. What do you think? Do you think the Texas governor's mansion should be rebuilt, refurbished with taxpayer dollars, contributions from you and others in the Lone Star State? Let us know what you think at ronwhitlock.com. Now, we're going to be looking today also, as we told you, at the importance of fathers to their children, the role models of fathers to their children and within the family unit, and in particular, an Hispanic family, the Lucio family. Those dimensions are, and here's the, here's the listing of them, 
instrumental providers, disciplinarian, role model, teachers, participants to the family unit, playmates, you guys play at golf all the time, and emotional supporters. Now, Eddie Lucio the first, Eddie Lucio Sr., what kind of a dad was he as a role model to you? 30 years as a deputy sheriff for Cameron County, where you were raised. What kind of a role model was he within the family unit? Ten children in the Lucio family. We were ten kids, six boys and four girls. And my dad uh, was a disabled American veteran, veteran of foreign wars. He, um, he, t he preached some patriotism, Americanism to us all the time. And he was a disciplinarian. All he had to do was just give us a good look, and that was it. We, we knew what to do. Um, my mother preached uh, citizenship, and uh, she took part, obviously, in the upbringing. But my dad was uh, really on top of things. He was a law enforcement officer for 30 years. And, um, you know, I'm pretty happy that I was born into a law enforcement home uh, um, because my dad was a, uh, so to speak, a good cop. He was a good law enforcement officer who followed the letter of the law, and um, that helped us all, keep, you know, walk a straight line. But uh, we did our studies, uh, and when he, was, when he came home at 5.15 right after work, we were at the table studying, and he made sure that um, we never veered off, and he was, um, he kept us together. He and Mom did a good job, I thought. So, Eddie III, looking back at your grandfather, Eddie Sr., your dad, Eddie Jr., <coughs> has that been basically maintained from generation to generation to generation, all of those things? Well, yes, sir, I mean, absolutely. My dad, uh, you know, he was, both my mom and my dad were, were both very uh, intent on making sure we didn't get in any trouble. Uh, we studied hard. We, you know, did what, what everything that was right. And I think my sister and I, because of the respect, and you know, and, and it wasn't as much fear as disappointing our parents. That was much more of a motivating factor, you know. Amen. When, when they, yeah, I mean, when they got mad at us, of course, that had an effect. But, you know, if they ever sat down and said, you know, I'm real disappointed in you. You're better than that. That was devastating. That's what, what made you straighten up and fly right. Uh, and I had very hands-on parents, both of them. You know, they communicated with uh, my dad, especially, you know, with my teachers, my principals. Uh, they were aware of what I was doing, and you know, there's no substitute for parental involvement, none. So, I, I'm, I'm fortunate. Not everyone had, you know, those hands-on. Your dad's Senator Lucio, role model to all the Lucios since, along with your mother, of course. What was the most important thing that your dad did in raising you, in particular, you? I think. Communicating with me the importance of public education and educate higher education. You know, my dad went to public schools here in Brownsville. They were very poor. He was one of eleven kids, but he loved education and he preached education. And back then, the greatest thing we could become were teachers. He loved his teachers and he respected them. And you know, he he encouraged us along with my mom to pursue uh, a teaching degree. So. Uh, he went to A&I. He, he got as far as uh, getting a degree, a BBA degree, a Bachelor of Business Administration. Came within one semester but ran out of money. And back then, that was it. He came back home and did not finish. I wonder how many deputy sheriffs in the state of Texas went to get a degree in those years. Not in those years. Phenomenal. But if you would go into the courthouse, into the attic of the old courthouse, open up any ledger, it's my dad's signature. It's my dad's handwriting. I did that when I became county treasurer, and I was amazed. Yeah. Every ledger I opened up, it was my dad's handwriting. Wow. Uh, and he, he was the chief office deputy for four for, for sheriffs. Now, Eddie the Third, same yeah. question. What did your dad, Eddie Lucio Jr., what was the most important thing he did in raising you? Most important. Well, you know, he, my dad taught me the importance of love. Um, very big heart, very compassionate person. Uh, my dad was very, you know, hugs and kisses with us, obviously made us feel loved, but at the same time, he taught us to never settle. He always wanted us to be the best at what we did, whether it was in school, you know, we brought home a report card, you can do better. I believe in you, you can do better. He, he Nothing wrong with a hug or a kiss between a father and his, oh, no. his, his, his <laughs> Not at all. male child or Not female at all. child. You know, uh, 
discipline. Discipline was something that I'm very proud of my dad instilled in me. What kind of discipline? Well, you know, if we didn't do what we were told in school. We heard about it when we get home in, in, in a few different ways. Uh, but that was important. You no know, corporal I, punishment? Uh, nothing that, that wasn't justified. Absolutely. I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I was a tough kid. Uh, I talked a lot. I had Bible, very Bible active. Said that, uh, <laughs> spare the rod and spoil the child. Well, uh, you weren't spoiled. You'll say that. I had everything I needed and a, a lot of things I wanted. But uh, it, it all came with the responsibility of performing well in school, of minding my parents. You know, I never, I never broke curfew. They never got a phone call from me in those tough teenage years that I was in trouble in any way. And it was because, um, you know, they, they said, they put me on a mission, on a mission to do well in school, go to college, uh, do well at golf. You know, I, because of my father's support, I was able to compete at golf, a sport I continue to enjoy to this day. So you fellas were playmates in addition to being oh, yeah. a role model, yeah. a teacher, provider. All right, absolutely. You know, your dad's done all of those things, and his father did all those things, obviously for him. So your version of Eddie Lucio, Eddie Lucio Jr., your dad was emotionally involved. He was Big time. having that heart. Still is. He was also a playmate. <laughs> he was. Uh, well, he, he introduced the game of golf to me at a, a real early age. And at first, I just didn't like the game. I, I wanted to, you know, be rough outside playing football and baseball and basketball. And he, he you know, knew it, would, it was a family tradition. All his brothers had played and, and really wanted me to enjoy that time with the extended family and with him for many years to come. Did he ever say, this is something you can carry into adult life? Uh, there are many, many sports in high school you cannot carry into adult he, life he, he did. other than golf. Is one of the few. Right. Tennis, I mean, he, he, he did to some degree, but I think he, he wanted to expose me to other kids my age that were great golfers in hopes that, mm -hmm. you know, I would, because I was competitive, that I would uh, catch the bug. And I did. He took me to a golf tournament in Austin. I must have been 11 or 12. And there was 100 people competing in my age division. I finished 99th. And that's because the person that was behind me had quit midway because it was too hot for him. So. Uh, I remember the ride home and I told dad, I said, you know, I, I don't like to lose and, you know, all the Lucios have been real good golfers and so uh, I'm going to take it seriously and I think he created a monster after that because I, I bugged him every morning to take <laughs> me to the golf course. So. You're nodding, you're nodding. You're well, <laughs> let me tell you, I, what Eddie didn't see, I saw because I'd been around golf, I'd been a caddy when I was a little guy, I caddied for some of the greatest players in the, in the country. Jackie Burke, who won the Masters, was down here doing an exhibition. Roberto De Vicencio from, uh, from Argentina came to play exhibition. I saw the best of the best growing up, and I saw a lot of potential in my son. He had an, a, a natural swing. I was so excited uh, because of what I saw. But Eddie's attention, obviously, with his friends was on other sports, other activities. And it was hard to break him in. But once he decided, like he just said, he decided that he really was going to apply himself, he went on to be a district champion golfer in high school and, and got a golf scholarship at Texas Tech and played a little professional golf, but he, he, didn't, he didn't really care for it that much and went to law school. But golf has, has done a lot for, for, for the Lucia family in so many ways. And um, I had the similar experience with my dad. My dad hated golf. It was the opposite of me. He hated golf, didn't want me to play. He thought it was a drunker sport, a gambler sport. But then I took him out on Caddy's Day and I showed him how to hit the ball. He was amazed. I would hook one, I would slice one, I would hit a high one, a low one. And, and he was just amazed and he took golf after that. So golf became part of the Lucio household. Is in the Hispanic community the role of the father more important now because of all the challenges coming in with gangs and so forth, many of these young people going to gang because they get that family feeling of belonging that they're losing within their own family. Unfortunately, a lot of kids are falling through the cracks. Um, the parents, uh, for some reason, are, are not communicating with them. There's a lack of communication. Maybe it's a way of life. Both parents are working now. We used to remember, I remember coming home, my mom was home waiting for 10 kids. Uh, it was different. It was different. Dad was uh, the uh, the breadwinner. Now uh, there's just 
I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of love, don't get me wrong, between parents and, ki and, and, ch and their children, but there's, there's a lot of peer pressure, there's or drugs, there's a lot of things today that uh, we didn't have yes in, in yesteryear, and, and, and it's just um, the challenges are even greater, I believe. So I really appreciate a parent or parents that get involved with their, with their children, especially in school. Uh, I think education is the key, you know, for anyone's future, and hopefully we can c continue to reach out for those at-risk children that uh, we have in our community that we can make a difference with. Now, any Lucio Sr., did he separate his career as a deputy sheriff from the family, or did he involve the family into his career and show the positive aspects of his career as a deputy sheriff for over 30 years? He always included us in, in, in many of the activities. I became a junior sheriff's posse. Uh, we would go and clean the beaches. Um, he would uh, always take us and even give us tour of the, of the jail, a place he never wanted us to, uh, to, to land in. in. Yeah. Um, he would, we would visit him in his office. Um, no, he was very inclusive. So you had a positive result by having been positively involved by your father, all ten children, in his career. Yes, sir. And, and he was involved with our... I didn't realize... My dad would call the principal or my teacher. I didn't realize that. So he was always involved. He, and my mom would go to the meetings uh, when they had teachers' meetings, uh, open house. Uh, so, yeah, we had parents, and we definitely had a daddy that was uh, very, very involved. Eddie the Third, how about your father? Did he separate his career from you and your sibling or not? No. He did it basically the same way his no, grandfather no, no. did? I was on the campaign trail as a little kid. Uh, Always. Yeah, I, so I knew. For you I, to become a state representative, just like your father as a state senator, yeah. was just kind of like well, falling off of no, rock for you. Not necessarily. Um, I think most people thought it happened. I didn't personally think it would happen because I was so in love with golf. But as you get older and you, you know, realize that there's more out there than just yourself, and I saw the type of issues my dad worked on, the people he was able to help, and the impact he had on his community. I wanted to do that too. That was, that was something I thought that was uh, meaningful, that I could um, lay, lay, a be, lay, lay in bed at night thinking that I accomplished something worthwhile. But Many fathers in, in not only the Hispanic community but in other communities seem to think that they're got to, they've got to be the protector of this brood. Did, did, did your father overprotect you or did he let you go out and make a few mistakes on your own and learn a little bit on your own? Uh, or was I, it a balance? I, w I was definitely uh, guarded, justifiably, I think, uh, because of all those issues that we spoke about earlier. Um, it's a different generation. I was exposed to, you know, alcohol and drugs and, and gangs and, and folks that were dropping out of school uh, that my d father's generation didn't deal with to, to the same degree. So, same you know, question for you. I remember Eddie talking to me very seriously one evening, very seriously, Dad, I really need you. This is my senior year. This is my last year of golf. I'm going to go on to college. And I told him, I said, son, I'm not going anywhere. He remembers that conversation. I'm going to be by your side. Don't you worry. Well, the next, the next day, I got a call from some heavy hitters in Hidalgo County asking me to move to McAllen to run for Congress. And I told him the truth. I says, I can't do that. My son is a senior in high school, and um, you know he's asked me to, to stay with him, so I can't leave and run for, for Congress. That's just one of the many times that, that, you know, that things came up where I had to make a decision who was more important, my family, my, my kids, um, or, or my career. And I just felt that they were. So I, I kind of stayed at home regionally, but I will say this, uh, Eddie's mama did a very good job because when I did leave to be a state representative, he was a young, young boy and he stayed back home and he, did, he just uh, was a good model uh, student uh, and very respectful of everyone and I got great reports. So when I made up, when we caught up in time when I came home for the weekends, but um, it, was, it was difficult. The Hispanic father. What does the Hispanic father mean within the Hispanic culture that may be different from other subcultures? What I, what I learned growing up from my dad was uh, obviously to, be, to have discipline in your life. But one of the things, uh, besides the education that, we, that, 
I always talk about. Besides the patriotism that he preached to us, let me tell you, I was with my dad many times when he would stop to help somebody change a tire, when he would stop to help a family uh, that was broken down or in need, when he would give his last nickel to make sure somebody had something to eat. Uh, you know, those are the things I remember plainly. And it's, um, it's, it's a wonderful thing to have a father pass on that type of tradition, a compassionate heart. Eddie? Uh, well, to speak specifically to the Hispanic family, um, my, my father always taught the importance, and my grandfather, my whole family, about you know being proud of our culture, uh, being proud of the food. Uh, you know, my grandparents made wonderful, uh, you know, Mexican American, Tex-Mex, border region food, and we, it was a big part of our culture. How we got together for the holidays, uh, and, and that helped us identify uh, with with who we were and made us proud of who we were. Uh, and, and with that pride came success for a lot of, you know, my generation. And we went on to be doctors and lawyers and, and businessmen and educators and so on and so forth. But I think it was because of that proud Hispanic heritage that we were raised in. I think one of the things that people miss is that the Hispanic people are very patriotic. And my dad used to say, don't label yourself, you're an American. But be proud of your culture, because that's what's going to make you stronger. And, and I think that's evident, as you mentioned. When you look at the men and women, especially the minorities, the, the Hispanics in our military, and those that uh, have, have fought and died, uh, there's a strong, strong presence uh, in, our, in our Hispanic community of patriotism and Americanism. Thank you both, Eddie Jr. and Thank Eddie you, the Third and the legacy of Eddie Lucio Sr. and what it's meant to the state of Texas and the community that you all have served, Cameron County and the city of Brownsville, San Benito. Thank you for joining us here on this program. If you want to repeat it or watch it 24-7, you can go to ronwhitlock.com. Till next time, adios.